Hello and welcome live to Buffalo Wild Wings. I'm Keaton Gologli along a lot of that work done. Yeah, to some degree, you get to Wednesday. Um, we just finished up our, our afternoon meetings. Um, we, have a, we have a practice tomorrow. We, we meet a little bit in the morning. But, yeah, a lot of the prep is done and, and you know, the planning. Uh, win over in Cheney. How about that ball game? 38-35 over Eastern. Man, Coach, that was uh, – we were talking about it at halftime. It kind of felt like we had already played a full game by the time we got to halftime. You guys had to be exhausted just going into the locker room at the break. I think in the second quarter defensively, and by then, offensively, we had some things going. Obviously, Tommy went down early enough, and that was a, that was a big blow. Um, yeah, so by halftime, uh, you know, it was just about kind of catching our breath. Order, um, offensively score, but then couldn't score again to get it to three scores. Um, and then, lo and behold, they hit that 80-yard play, and uh, the, the game was on. And, um, boy, <laughs> I, I got past halftime there, but no. Date. He's doing well. Yeah, he's, uh, he's progressing. Uh, he's going to do some light activity tomorrow, so he's on track um, by, by all the word I've got to, give, to be, be back next week, um, which is good, you know, uh, so far this week. And, you know, that, that hit in that moment where he's sliding, it was two linebackers that kind of came in. I mean, what did you see? I mean, up in the booth, it, it looked pretty vicious, but on replay, it didn't quite look as bad as it did, I think, I think live. But what was your opinion on the way that game? As, as quick as you can, and you think there should be a flag, and there's a flag. Um, they ultimately picked the flag up, and then they, they explained what happened, you know, what they saw in the replay. And um, I, you got to trust that they got that, pe that part right, and, and really they did. Uh, it heads more than anything. Um, uh, teammates did. He hit his head on the, you know, uh, on the side, um, really hard on the turf, um, and that's that's where a lot of concussions come. In any sport, is more hitting the head on the, the playing surface than it is actually in. And I think our guys are around him, I think, knew that they had to support him. Um, you know, unfortunately, injuries are part of the game that uh, that we're a part of. Um, and uh, while you don't want to see him, you you can't let those thoughts touchdown uh, rush that he went right up the middle and it wasn't like that was a short run either I mean that the way he was running that game was so hard it was so bruising and at the end of that game too you could see his arms were all torn up he had a hole in his jersey but you know I think in the in the moment uh, Sean's a competitor and I think he was doing everything we could he could allow us to win the football game and that's what I appreciate about him and many many of our guys they're just uh they're competitive and, and you know you look at uh Ty Okada and their quarterback really, you know, are the same distance from that ball laying on the ground, and Ty found a way to, to come up with it. And obviously the last play with the uh, the interception, um, you know, three of our guys, one of their guys going going up, and one of their playing this to, to do everything they can to win a football game. So it was Cal who actually knocked that ball out because live it looked like it was Sebastian who kind of came from behind with a punch, and that's where they credit it statistically, but it was Cal? Yeah, I think they've got that flipped up. Uh, okay. Bill's got that flipped up. Yeah, it was actually. Down an interception in the end zone of the very next play. You get that forced fumble and you get it back. And then the defense continued to step up too. I mean, obviously you guys scored so quickly, and, you know, the old football cliche, you can't be picky about your scores, but it did give them some time against one of their receivers. And then, of course, uh, Brody Greeby with the sack, and then that interception we talked about which uh, Danny Alula Keppel was the one who was able to snag it and he will be one of the guys joining the show today along with uh, Willie Patterson so we'll have those guys well we hope all our guys um, offense defense special teams understand that the, each game is a long game in one play uh, maybe a handful of plays does not define it good or bad and I appreciated our our defensive uh, players and coaches going that hit um and, and ultimately, you know, really strung together a, a, a long stretch of really good defense. Um, and, and that's what that's what we need. We we got to be a, a team that um, we might we might bend a little bit um, and we got to be locked in. And, and uh, you know, we got to rally to the football and our guys need to understand, hey, we're, you're one out of 11 out there. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't always work that way in a young man's head. So, uh, you know, we're getting better out there. We're going to get it done. And um, I think that's that's. That's what our guys did um, after that early stretch and then ultimately, uh, you know, going out there and making those plays at the end um, speaks a lot to, you know, you know who we have is just uh, – well, it's not the – it'll be our third night game. Um, we played at six, Gold Rush, f uh, five Pacific uh, out at Portland. Uh, last year we played at eight, I believe, a couple times, the, the Weber State game and even the Sam Houston game. So you try to get uh, four hours before the game no matter when we play with our pregame meal. So – 
you know, the day goes slow. Um, a Saturday goes a little faster than a Friday. I know that uh, <laughs> that Friday in Ogden last year, that, that got, got to be a long day. So our guys kind of At, off the air. All right, coming up, we'll be talking a little bit of volleyball. We got our Cat Grizz game coming up on Friday. So we're going to talk some volleyball. And then Daniel Lou Lakepa and Willie Patterson will join the show in a little bit as well. You can enjoy Cat Chat, the official radio. Okay, all right, all right, all right. We've got some more stuff to give away. Evie, we are giving away a hat with the Montana State roots and the logo on there. There we go. All right, hi. at Buffalo Wild Wings for Cat Chat. I am Keaton Gilogaly. want to remind you that Universal Athletic has been a proud supporter of Bobcat Athletics for over 45 years. Shop their great selection of Bobcat Apparel. All right, uh, we've got Cat Grizz coming up on uh, Friday night over at the Fieldhouse. Volleyball's taking on the Grizz who are coming into town. So we're going to talk to uh, the head coach of volleyball, Cole Iazzi, and uh, the beautiful, beautiful. You know, you can say the most insightful things, but if nobody can hear you, well, nobody's going to listen. That's real. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk a little volleyball. You guys are off to a 2-0 start. Nicely done. So we talked to you guys last week. Take down Eastern Washington at home. Go to Northern Colorado. Just being back in the big sky kind of showed our level of play, and we are – again at the top end even though the record maybe didn't show it and then going down to unc was really cool we have i'm one in ten against them in my career here so that your perspective how was this week how'd you guys get settled into conference play uh, i think it was a great week to start um i think it really set the tone for how we want the rest of the season to go we came out uh, guns a blazing everyone swinging everyone blocking and i think it was a great way to start yeah, no doubt uh helena but uh you had quite the run of success over there, is that right? How many yeah. consecutive matches did you win? I think 71. 71. <laughs> That's yeah. not too shabby. Well, and you know, you're trying to get yourself settled here and, and get some wins. What's the key to driven people? Every day before practice, there's people in there getting extra reps. After practice, everyone's getting extra reps. No one even asks, or like coaches don't have to ask. We all want them ourselves. And I think that we're a very driven team, and that's what keeps our success going. Love that. Attendance record, which was 6,378. So we'll see if we can get to that. But as you look forward to this, uh, this Grizz match, Coach, uh, what should we look for in this matchup? Yeah, um, I hope we block a lot of balls like we have been. Um, <laughs> so if we can bring our composure, I think we have, um, you know, I think we're in a good place. You guys also this week have the uh, Defensive Player of the Week. Lauren Linseth was the Defensive Player of the Week. Audrey, how well did uh, Lauren play this? We're going to have to start having that game plan, too. Yeah, that's uh, pretty impressive numbers that she was able to put up. And as you mentioned, uh, mentioned that defense was such a big portion of this last week going to UNC. What did you see from Lauren, Coach? Yeah, I think she played behind the block really well. Um, you say Libero or Libero? Libero. You go Libero. Yeah, uh, you, Libero. Okay, where did Libero come from? Overseas. Okay, so foreigners. that's the European way to say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. All right, see, I was always confused. I get them mixed up in my head because I feel like I hear them all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Well, big time volleyball matches going. So how have you seen it kind of grow uh, through your time as a volleyball player? Um, it's grown a ton. Like you said, like coming in here, it's already on the screens. When we were flying home from Colorado, they had one of the games up on the channel. and they did Very quick. It's oh, yeah. very fast. And it's so strategic from moment to moment to moment. What do you love about volleyball? What, what makes you love the game so much? Um, 
I love setting up my hitters and watching them hit. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's my job, but I just love... A little bit about what kind of player Audrey is for you guys. Only a sophomore to run your offense. Yeah. Um, Audrey has a really good sense of humor, and I've taken a long time to learn the sense of humor. Um, when she's on the court dancing, I'm like, are you focused or are you not? But she's led... So volleyball coming up against the Grizz, 7 o'clock on Friday, the all-time series. MSU leads it. By only one game, though, 11 to 10 against the Grizz. So big one to stay over 500 against that other team down the road. Yes. All right, guys. Th this is Catchat from Learfield. game. Uh, it's got the silver Bobcat logo, and it's a nice little navy blue. All right, here we go. Last four numbers, last four numbers. Uh, six, four, eight, two. Six, four, eight, two. Welcome back. Go Cats, go Cats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great crowd here. There was a great crowd in Cheney this Saturday as well. Give us a little feel for how loud that crew right behind the bench was in that game. Oh, yeah, we always travel well, so it's, it's always exciting to see everyone out there. At, in that game than they were after R.J. Fitzgerald scored that touchdown for you guys? Oh, the R.J. touchdown was crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's always see, good seeing them jump, jump cut in the back there, so, yeah. Um, I, I would say probably one of the, the loudest points was... 20 to the Montana State 40, and number uh, number 17, Nolan Ulm, went up. He was sky. He was way oh, up yeah. there. Yeah, he got up there. He got, two, sure. he got two mitts on that rock. Mm -hmm. Ty Okada came over. Tyson Pottinger, who was in uh, filling in for Jeffrey Manning. Who, <laughs> tell us about that play from your perspective. Yeah, so um, co Coach called a good play, so I got back in my landmark drop. It was about 4th and 14, so I, I know I had to get depth, so I got back pretty far. And I think the concept we got was all go, so... Of course, I had an arm in there and rip it out like right when we were about to hit the ground. And then when, when, we, when I hit the ground, my back, my back was on the ground and I saw the ball in the air. I was like, oh, let me get that. <laughs> <laughs> now, was that ball still moving when you come I mean, if I think if only two of you guys get there, there's a chance he makes that catch. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, it, it was just. Great, great timing for, for everyone to be there, Yeah, for sure, yeah. Well, and, and Bobby Daly, the assistant head coach and linebackers coach, a Hall of Famer here at my moment away from them. Because if he makes that catch, they're on your 40-yard line. Mm -hmm. They're within field goal range potentially. And that, I mean, that would have been an incredible snag because, again, he was way up there. That oh, was not oh, yeah. an easy catch. For sure. And, and their, their kicker had a boot, too. So. Back out on the field before they announced that the play stood. Mm -hmm. Why did you guys go back out of the field as a unit in that moment? Uh, well, the, the refs came up to, I think, Coach Vegan and said that the catch, the, they were calling it a catch, but I think they meant fuse because they took another, like, five minutes when we got out there, but they gave it to me. So, so you yeah. got to celebrate twice. Yeah. <laughs> love, love to do that. <laughs> uh, well, I want to go back to earlier in this game because we kind of mentioned it with Coach Vegan, just how many big defensive plays were giving up some of those big plays. Uh, well, Co we, we got back and j just Coach just drew up. What, what they ran, and he really just walked us through how to fit it out, and we got some new checks in there just to 
just to really uh, put it together. And you guys, I mean, you guys were killing it at the end of that second quarter, into that third quarter. I mean, that was, mm -hmm. I think it was five consecutive three and outs plus the end of the half. I mean, that was quite the run you guys put together defensively in, the, in that stretch. Yeah, for sure. Uh, one, one of our goals was actually to be daily, too. I mean, uh, he's an interesting guy. We're going to have him on the pregame show this weekend, too, before the UC Davis game. I mean, you're, you're playing for a Hall of Famer, a guy who had tremendous success here. His, his parent, his dad played here. I mean, he's a legacy guy. What's Bobby Daly like? How did you guys start to build that relationship? What were some of the things you guys talked about? How did you guys connect? He, he was just asking me about, like, how my high school was doing. He would call me all the time, asking me about, like, my, how my family's doing, how, how I'm doing. I came up for an official over the, that off Stern. Lots of, lots of, like, big sky schools, yeah. really, everyone in the big sky. So was it just Bobby, or was there something else that kind of tipped, uh, tipped the scales for you? Well, I, I, I love Bozeman. The first time I came here, I just loved it. And, re yeah, really just the coach. Bozeman. Uh, for, first thing we, we did was uh, we, went, we went to um, Sidewinders. So good restaurant over there. Yep, yeah. yeah. Shout, shout out to Sidewinders. Not as good as <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings, for hey, sure. Not, yeah, yeah. But shout out to Buffalo Wild Wings, uh, best of Bozeman, <laughs> for sure. You come in. I came in the start of COVID. So right. I graduated 2020. Okay. And then, yeah. So I got here, and then COVID was like, the, a big thing right yeah, yeah. so you would have graduated so what's that timeline you would have did you get a chance to actually walk across the stage or had things been shut down by that point what was the emotion like in that moment I mean it, it was nothing nothing crazy it was pretty calm I yeah. just I just drove up uh, my principal handed to me I said I said yep thanks and then I, <laughs> <laughs> I left <laughs> and that's it and then on to cat country yeah I mean it's one of those things too is we can else has to deal with something like that yeah. how did you spend that first year when you're trying to get acquainted to the college game and everything is shut down I was just trying to like relate to my teammates, just trying to just trying to meet everyone and just trying to build my body up for the next level. Yep. And now here we just before like it, the energy out there. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to get it again, too. How many people here are going to be showing up to this game on Saturday against UC Davis? Yeah. Ho hopefully everyone. Yep. Everyone better go. All right. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm spotting who's not clapping. And yeah. We're going to go over to their table. Yeah. Who's so messy that it's going to get on his nerves? Like, are you stealing his his mugs? Oh, no, 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 no. no, no. no. It's not too bad. Nah, yeah. W Willie, Willie, uh, he. Not, I want to say clean freak, but he he gets it done for sure. He be <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as like my big bro ever since I got out here. He he's, he's really just shown me along the ropes, just show me how to how to be a cat, really. Yeah. Well, so what is it? How do you be a cat? What are some of the things that make a bobcat a bobcat? Um, really, j just like our core values, uh, character, accountability. That's really like a 10, 10, 20 minute drive. So he he's really just uh, like harnessed it into me, and and just we talk all the time about it. Yeah, and mm. so and it's uh, so far so good. It's really worked out. How, how have you yeah. felt like your season's been going for you? It's going for because okay. I, I only had the the COVID right the COVID year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Last you didn't truly price. redshirt. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna call you just a sophomore, third year sophomore. Yeah, third third year sophomore. Okay. That works. Yeah. All right, good, good, good. <laughs> we're figuring it out, but eventually we'll be far enough away from this. Thing. Eagle Mount Bozeman is committed to providing quality, adaptive recreation and sport opportunities for people with disabilities and young people impacted by cancer, as well as to provide support for families of participants so that they shall mount up with wings as eagles. This is. So far, so I want to make sure I really spin it up here. All right, all right, all right. Last four numbers, last four numbers. Six, four, six, three. Six, four, six, three.
Willie Patterson. Willie, how we doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing great. Yes, game week. Yes. UC Davis coming up on Saturday, 8.15 p.m. over at Bobcat Stadium. You ready to go? If the game was right now, you ready to run out there? Yes, right now. Third downs, you turn around and tell them, you know, get loud, and they really get loud. And I could see, honestly, their offense struggling out there just because of the, our fans. So they travel everywhere, even in Portland. I heard them. Even they tucked them. <laughs> and, uh, of course, R.J. Fitzgerald, he was a classmate. You guys come in the same year? Yep, yep. Yeah. that's my boy. How much fun was it to watch this it man was score amazing. a touchdown? It was amazing because me and him were roommates for about two and a half years before I moved with Danny and Isaiah. So we've talked in zone. Yeah, when you would say that kind of stuff to him, like how excited was he? Was he kind of brushing it off like, nah, whatever, you know, I just want the team to score? Or was he like under, kind of undercurrent of like, no, no, I want this touchdown. No, he's kind of the other way. He yeah. wants he wants to block for everybody. Yeah, the way back. Did you see him with the little Yeah, Superman? the airplane. Yeah, oh. I, might, I, I might steal that celebration okay. this game. The little airplane. Yeah. That's the RJ airplane now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did he? Did you know he, like, he, did he have that planned or did that just come out? He naturally? told me he just came out. All right, I got to ask you a little bit about Shaw Chambers. What oh, a performance. Yeah. Obviously, Thank goodness Tommy Malott's going to be okay. He's going to be back in there. We're excited for what he does. But Sean Chambers stepped up into a void, and he made some big plays. Yep. Tell us about what it was like. He came and told us, actually Thursday, and he came and told the team, you know, we're going to have to go through adversity. And he told us that right in the freaking huddle, and it was crazy because we just talked about how adversity was going to strike. So next thing you point with all his throws, all his runs, it was perfect. I mean, they, they had a hard time bringing him down. He was going yeah. out of bounds, shoving guys off him. He's a monster. <laughs> he is a monster. Like, you know, you see it throughout fall camp. He's running around. People are tagging off. And you're like, I wonder who, how he is when people really agree. Yeah. Well, tell us a little more about Sean Chambers uh, as a person. You know, so he transfers from Wyoming. He had some time uh, where he had some season-ending injuries while he was over there. Yep. He decides to come here and be the number two guy. That mm -hmm. takes a lot to do that. And then, you know, he came in kind of head down and humble. So that kind of earned a lot of respect from the guys early, and he was working hard, and in the weight room he was strong as heck. So we're like, okay, we got something with this guy, and then we see him run hard, and guys are tagging off on him and everything. Is it, so now is his voice kind of uh, creeping up a little bit now that he's been thrust into more of a leadership role? Definitely. He brought us around throughout that Eastern game. He was talking to the offensive line and all of us like, hey, this is our moment. We got this. We got this. You know, that quarterback. And yep. then you get the interception in that, on that fourth down play in the fourth quarter yeah. before, the, before the fumble. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what the demeanor on that sideline was after that fourth down interception uh, at the end of that game. It was like we need one first down. That's it. We need one first. He's going to get it. Yeah. And we truly believed in it. Like, our whole offensive line was like, okay, it's fourth quarter. It's, it's the Pete's Hill we ran. It's the M we ran. It's all the workouts. And the summer training comes down to this moment right here. So it was good. Right. And Elijah, he's a guy who I think there's a lot of reason he could have felt maybe some resentment. You know, you're down on the depth chart. You don't get a lot of reps against uh, Oregon State in Portland, his hometown. Yep. And he comes out with that type of performance. Tell us a little bit about what uh, Elijah Elliott is like and how he's going, not going your way. And being, you got to be ready, though, because when that opportunity comes, what are you going to do with it? And that was his opportunity to Eastern, and he went crazy with it, you know? And if he goes bad with it, then you see, like, okay, what were you doing those last four weeks? You don't want to be not ready, you know, because then you're going to even hurt, hurt yourself even more. So I told, hey, be ready. Make sure you're on your P's and Q's, running hard, and when you get the ball, show them why you need the ball. Show them why you need the ball, and I think that's what he did. And he did ourselves. Any long run. Any long pass, it's always because of the receivers downfield making plays. If it's a long run, we don't block. That guy gets tackled at the one-yard line, you know? So we make sure that we're at the end of the film, we're on our guy. And our Sometimes you're only going to have one or two catches in yeah. a game. How do you guys stay focused? How do you stay hungry even when you're not getting the ball consistently? We just know that when it's third down or when a big moment's going to happen, we got to step up and make that play. And it's, it's kind of the plays that you've put together of all and everything for the team. The ball's going to find you at the end of the day. So you just got to be ready. Well, sometimes you got to find the ball when you're getting draped by coverage. Oh, and you're yeah. able to get up there. Yep. <laughs> yeah. What's your, favorite, uh, what's your favorite catch so far this year that you've had? Probably that gold rush one. Yeah, that, that gold first run. Yeah. <laughs> it was that touchdown on the left side of the sideline, a gold rush. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. We needed that. Uh, we've been working on that all summer. We've been doing all types, me, Sean Chambers, and even Tommy, all the receivers. We've been doing workouts, and we're just playing. Uh, how did you develop your ball skills? Because sometimes, man, up in the press box, it just it looks like you are 100% covered, and then all of a sudden, boom, the ball's in your hands. Yeah. How did you develop that? How did you develop that attacking of the football? Like well, that? it was uh, handed, two hands, over the shoulder, other, other shoulder, low ball. 
trying to get every other angle I can because I dropped the ball, I think it was like 2019 versus Albany in the playoffs, and it hurt me to the soul, and it hurt me to the soul, and I, and I knew you, have, you can have a good game and you had four catches. You know, a running back can have 15, 20 carries and finally score, you know, but we get the ball three or four times. What are you going to do with it? Yep, five catches and uh, two pass interferences in this game, too. Yeah. Count those, too, Red Bull oh, or Kevin Garnett. Oh, I think KG got me beat, right, man. Right, he, right. He's a legend, but uh, I feel like it just, even like where we come from, when we, me and Danny, we're brought up in a, in a place where it's just, you know, a little trash talk is acceptable here and there. I mean, is it more about them? Is it what you're doing? I mean, what's your, what's your it's, trash talk? I got to make a couple plays first so okay. then, it, you know, I can back it up right. by, okay, I caught two balls on you. What are you, you going to say now? You know, right. I can't be doing nothing out there and then talking my mess. Right. You know, so you got to make sure you feel so good to finally get that first catch in the game. Yeah, it's going to be fun, man. Can't wait to see another one. How excited you'll be back home in front of these Bobcat fans. Oh, I can't weeks. wait. Yeah, and it's, it's, and it's a night game, so it's going to be like a Friday night lights. Under the lights, I know it's going to be a movie out there. Problem. Thanks for working so hard to catch all those footballs. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> and we look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Yep, let's go, baby. Go uh, Cats. Willie Patterson. Universal Athletic has been a proud supporter of Bobcat Athletics for over 45 years. Check out their great selection of Bobcat Get in Bobcat Athletics over wings and beer every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. only at Buffalo Wild Wings. Also, Eagle Mount Bozeman is committed to providing quality adaptive recreation and sport opportunities for people with disabilities and young people with head coach uh, Brent Vegan. And, Coach, you know, before we uh, get some of your thoughts on this UC Davis game coming up on Saturday, how nice was that moment on the plane? It was uh, Coach Armstrong's, Brian Armstrong's birthday, the offensive line coach. They got guys recognized him i didn't realize his birthday i know that much <laughs> yeah no that was uh that was a nice moment and uh, it's a little easier to celebrate coming off uh, a win like that which hopefully we'll be talking about that next week but it's certainly not going to be easy as we look ahead to hastings their quarterback leads the conference in passing yards this year and they've got the second most interceptions in the big sky so this is a team that's going to be a tough test what should we look for on saturday well, they're a good team, like you said. Uh, they're one against, uh, you know, Gilliam was the, I think, preseason offensive player, the yep. player of the year in the conference. So so he's the, the guy that makes them go, and it's uh, they hand him the football, but they throw it to him a lot. But they have a lot of guys they can uh, spread it around to. I think last week they completed difference Correct, at the same three. time. So, um, you know, offensively, it's still we got to make them one-dimensional. You know, and that, that's, Weber did that. I don't think Davis's idea is that they're going to throw 57 times. So if we can slow down Gilliam, I think that's where it definitely starts. And uh, really, you know, be able to uh, to run it, but we got to be able to throw it. You know, the last two games uh, we haven't thrown it probably as effectively as as we would have liked. Um, so that's got to be part of it. Uh, Robbie, Willie, Cleveland, um, you know, our tight ends. I mean, they're all capable receivers. And, and getting back, um, you know, we got to be able to establish that. And it's going to be a great game. You know, it's uh, two good teams. Their backs are against the wall, but uh, I'm glad we're here. We're playing at home in front of our fans uh, on national TV. It's uh, it's going to be a great opportunity for us and. Was our look ahead presented by Vance Thompson Vision and Cat Chat is presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. All right, thanks to head coach Brent Vegan. Thank you, Willie P. Thank you, Danny.